My name is Dan Radakovich. I'm director of athletics at Clemson University. What is your leadership oath? Do you have like an oath of leadership or a mantra or what you believe in about leadership more than anything? You know, I, I think as you, as you look at leadership, there's hundreds and hundreds of books written about leadership. But I think in, in our case, it's transparency and being honest. Uh, because as a director of athletics, you're running a large organization. And a lot of people look at this as their leisure time activity. And we need to make sure that they understand how we work uh, so that they'll use those uh, leisure dollars to invest inside our program. So I think the more our fan base and our students and our university know about how an athletic program works, uh, the better you're going to be. Because there's a lot of myths and there's a lot of uh, untruths out there that, that may have been permeated over time. So the ability to break those down and be truthful and transparent in that particular aspect is really important. But truth and transparency is probably the bedrock of, of the leadership style that I have. Mm -hmm. um, positive leadership, what's the value of it? And how do you foster a positive work environment, positive communications and relationships in your workplace? Well, I think that those are very important. And, and sometimes you need to have people within your organization because as the leader, you tend to get moved into some things that maybe aren't so positive. So it's important for you to have those people around you that create that positive environment. At, at Clemson, we're very blessed. Dabo Sweeney is, without a doubt, the most positive person I've ever been around. And as a director of athletics, there are times when you get pulled into some things that don't make your day go so well. Uh, I'll stop over and see Dabo to get my little cup of Dabo uh, because he's so inherently positive and sees so many good things. And I think as, as you look at his program, you see how that positivity has created a great foundation for uh, his success. But your, the positive nature of, of leadership, uh, it's a lot better than the other style, There's, that's for sure. Definitely. Um, I, you, know, you may have heard the phrase, feedback is a gift. What's the value of feedback and what tools do you use to ensure you're receiving the feedback you need to improve as a leader? Well, I think feedback is, is incredibly important, as you state. Um, sometimes you just need to listen. You, you need to almost write on your hand, don't talk, uh, listen, when that feedback is coming through. Because you know there are times when you know that maybe they're straying off or, or they're going into an area of maybe that's not exactly the case. They're getting, giving a little myth there uh, along with what they're talking about. But it's important for them to understand that you heard it all. So feedback's good, but listening to feedback is even better. And, and making sure that you discipline yourself to hear it all the way through and then be able to, to speak to it or act upon it after that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, can positive leadership, getting back to that, be leveraged in difficult times to maximize performance? I think it can. You know, you're putting in positive deposits into the bank of, of you know, whether it's people trusting you and understanding that you have the organization's best interest at heart. Uh, all of those things are, are important when you have difficult times. So that positive leadership and, and making sure that people know they're valued members of the team uh, are, are incredibly important during difficult times. I know that you, in your department and in athletics, you make that you make changes. There's change coaching wise and different. You know, you have to deal with the change from the NCAA. So, talking about effective leading effective change, um, successful change initiatives maybe would have some resistance. What advice do you offer in identifying and overcoming resistance to change and change initiatives? <coughs> change is obviously difficult, as you just talked about. Um, Sometimes you go through all of those really good steps of listening and making sure your ideas are out there and you take different steps to make sure people can see why the change is needed and necessary. But sometimes that's just not enough. Uh, so you need to call the question. Um, there have been circumstances in the past where from a textbook perspective, uh, it's really not the right way to go about change. But uh, I certainly feel that in very, very few cases, sometimes you have to pull the pin on the grenade, throw it into the middle of the table, and just see what happens, because it's at that time. It's through those really important crisis or perceived crisis modes that great decisions are made. If there's no urgency and there's no catalyst to look to move forward with that change, sometimes change doesn't happen. 
So while there's a really good way to go about in educating people and talking about change, sometimes you reach a point where that can't occur any longer. And you really have to create a, a circumstance for people to, to really focus on the issue at hand. So it's really being decisive. Um, what's the importance of communication tools and taxes, tactics when we're talking about positive change? Sure. You know, I think that today the social media environment and what you're able to do in reaching so many people is incredibly important. Um, there was an investment that we made at Clemson in that particular area through all of the different social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of those different things. And w we've gotten pretty good at it. And it's not me saying that. It's the, our football Twitter account was named uh, the Twitter account of the number one in the country. We're one of the only college environment uh, that is up for a sports business journal award. We did that consciously. We said we want to go in and be best in class in this space. That's really created an incredible amount of pride and positive reinforcement within our department. For those who thought that the social media space was not something that was going to last or how is it going to um, get to your older donors or other people that were uh, within your organization. It's really been the opposite. You, you've been able to, we've been able to recruit a lot of different individuals, not only prospective student athletes, but fans and people who are uh, just enjoy following Clemson. So it's been, it's been real important to use those tools uh, that you have at hand to be able to make sure that you get your message across on the subject of communication, how do you communicate to others knowing that not everybody thinks alike or may not like your approach, your leadership approach? Well, you just have to keep doing it. Um, you know, you can't be deterred by the vocal minority. And you know, the, the people who really don't like, whether it's a decision or a path that you're taking, they're the ones who are going to take the time to let you know about it. Uh, most of the other folks, if they're agreeing with it, are not going to take the time to say, hey, that was a great idea, you should move forward with it. So you really have to understand that with, within your communications to stay positive, to stay transparent, to put everything out on the table so that reasonable people can make their decisions. Mm -hmm. How do the best teams and organizations maximize personal influence and team motivation? Wow, yeah. it's an interesting question. You know, I think it comes from the leader um, and, and from the head coach, for example, if we're talking about a team. You know, a team is going to take on the persona of their head coach. If their head coach is, is uh, very positive, you're going to find a team many times that, that is very positive. If the coach is, is more cerebral and not a rah-rah type of person, that's the kind of team that you're going to have. Uh, if you have a, a, a team where a coach is, is very uptight and, and analytical, sometimes that's the way your team works as well. So you, you have to be able to create that balance within your team and you have to create that balance within your organization um, because you can't have all the same types of administrators um, working together on, on an administrative team. You have to have a great blend of people to balance out the, the very positive and, and maybe the, the not so positive people. Uh, great teams consist of di uh, differing individual goals and styles. How can conflict be managed to create team harmony? I seem to get a lot of that. Well, there, there is, especially these days. You know, everybody wants things right now. Um, the idea of building and allowing these types of things to, to move forward, uh, that window is getting shorter and shorter. But uh, I think the successful leaders um, take conflict and utilize it in a positive way to say it's really, it, this isn't conflict per se, these are just differences. And how are we going to come to some meeting of the minds based on your opinion and your opinion being you know, 180 degrees apart from one another. How do we find that, that middle? And you do that again through good communication, positive communication, and, and hopefully in, in some cases, uh, some data. Here's, here's kind of where we are right now. Uh, let, let's make sure that, that these decisions, if, if, they're, if they're such where data will help, uh, that we're putting as much data out in front of folks to make a positive decision as you can.
As we wrap it up, you, you mentioned data there. What's the value of having a culture that's data-driven versus anecdotal information? Well, data is better than anecdotes, okay? That, that's, that, that's important to know. But you have to remember that we're in the people business. Not everything we do creates an ROI. Not everything we do in athletics uh, is, is measured by uh, a dollar sign or uh, a percentage of, uh, of graduation. We impact young people. And, and that's what's so important. And if you have people around your organization that, where their number one goal is to impact the student athletes that are there for a very, very short period of time, and that they come as, as a freshman one way and they leave as a senior another way and, and they're better people and they're more educated and they understand a work environment. Uh, it, it's, no, uh, it, it's important to understand why employers flock to student athletes, people who, who have great time management, who have great discipline and understand how to work under pressure. Those are the values of athletics that we need to continue to to perpetuate as, as leaders, to allow our student athletes to know that their work, while difficult in, in a very short period of time, will gain them lifelong positive results.